You know what the problem? I told you the other day, Lewis. I am a. Uh, uh, remember, I told you I'm a three era uh, athlete. Remember we spoke about that, Lewis. You say you're a three era athlete. I'm a three era, a three decade athlete. Th y yeah. And you're telling me these fucking kids got, got nothing on me when it comes to dancing, Lewis. Chris, I um. The one time. You know what upsets me about you? I saw you dance the, two times. Then you saw me. You I, saw. Chris, I, it, I, I it, tore it. I tore it up and 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 and, and let the, let the, Love you, ma. Let the all, you did, well, all you did was wear out the soles on those Jordans by having everybody clear back. We moved fucking tables. And, what, and, and we almost broke the fucking fence to make space for you. And what, and was, what you did? What was born? Nothing. What was born? Nothing. What was born that particular day? It, 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 I had to say things because I was embarrassed. No. I said, you guys are going you guys are gonna be ready for this shit. Hey. And Gaia was about to go. And Gaia was born. <laughs> and Gaia was born. That's what I'm talking about. And Gaia was born. And 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 it upset me because you I had to give you a nickname because you were fucking. No, it, it upsets me, Lewis. You know why it upsets me, Lewis? Because you know, you know, you know um, what, what do I know? That you, you can burn a good soul. Lewis, you know. What I brought to the table that day, everybody's jaws dropped. Like, oh shit! Look at Goldito, because that's what they used to call it, Goldito. And the guy that was born, and and that was salsa. This music now, hip hop. You think you can move to hip hop? No, Chris. Let me see a two step. I, I don't have to show you. No, I see. That's the problem. I have nothing to prove to you. All I'm telling you is that I'll destroy shit. You think so? I know so. I forgot to call again. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Breeze Shooters, the show that brings you sports, news, okay. poker, and everything in between. We love the tweeters. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's up? Public service announcement, Lewis. What's that? Public service announcement. PCA. PSA. PSA. All right. Only gangsters wear pink. <laughs> I don't like to call it pink, man. I like to call my shit salmon. You know what? Uh, I'm not even mad because if you're going to bring that energy for all the shirts you wear, I'm cool. What do you mean? Because, you know. Uh, <laughs> Lou, it is what it is. Matching drinks. <laughs> So what's up, Chris? How's everything, man? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. Everything is is lovely, man. And 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 and, and it's just life is good, Luke. Life, life is, is good. good, man. Life is good. You have to enjoy every second of life. Life yeah. is very good. You're not lying, man. You're not lying. I love it. I love it. Oh man. Um. What I was gonna do, I was gonna ask you something. So how how's the the <laughs> how's your dreams coming along? Oh, Luke. Whew. Ever since I discovered dream storming. Uh huh. My life has become much easier. I told you, I went home, I tried that shit with the lotto ticket. Yeah. I didn't win. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just started off wrong. Look, look, you started. Look, the, I, I didn't win. Look, I, I went home, I said, Chris says, pretend. No. You're cashing the ticket. Yeah. You get the money. Yeah. But. But when I went to I get the money, the pain in your face. when I went to go get the money, he <laughs> says, "No." <laughs> See, that's what I said. No, no, check it again. Check it again. Run it again. You know what you're talking about? No, no, scan it again. Scan it again. Why? Why did I get? Listen, I'm trying to steal my ticket. I signed it back. <laughs> Listen, Lou. Um. Uh. uh no, the the, <laughs> the thing with that is you have control of it. Because remember, you're not sleeping. You're trying to fall asleep. So if right off the bat, they, apparently, the New York, apparently the New York State Lottery didn't think so. <laughs> they say, hey, uh, Parker, you didn't win. Listen, Lou, that's the best way I go to sleep, man. Yeah. Best way. I see myself buying my, my, my daughters at the houses. I see myself buying a house, uh, uh, buying a house in a... Uh, uh, um, here in New York, and then buying another house. Uh, I want some, uh, you know, uh, uh, to be. Uh, I like um, like Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia is nice. Dominica, not Dominican Republic. Not Dominica. Dominica. Yeah. Beautiful small island. I like those islands to have a nice, a nice 
simple house right on the beach. You know what? Let's play an exercise. Let's play an exercise. I love exercises. Does it have to All be right. the ring? You won $15 million. $15 million. All right. Government takes that 50%, right? 45%. Yeah. yeah, we'll say 50 So you're down to $7.5 million. Okay. Tell me how you're going to spend that. Uh, okay. Uh, first off, uh, it's a lump sum. It's a lump sum. So, so it's seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yes. You're, you're good. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure my daughters got their houses. That's what I'm saying. I I can't. I I don't I don't understand how you just how it just stopped from, with the ticket for you. Like, like I'm no 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 no. So I had the ticket in my mind. I had you won. won. No, you won. So I'm going to. But you because remember I used to work downtown Manhattan. So I used to see the lottery place. Okay. And on a couple of occasions, I would just stare. I would stare to see what the hell was going on to see if I had sort of yeah, action. Yeah. yeah, so I see myself going into the building. Okay. I say, here's my ticket. And like in the store, La Bodega, yeah. I got the little scanner. scanner. He said, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> you know, the one beep, and the one beep with the, hey. <laughs> Get that. And the confetti. So you know sometimes when you get the double beat. Yeah. It's because it can't read the phone so let me get that back. Yeah. <laughs> try it again. Try it again. No. <laughs> so make sure. Alright, so how do you put it? Um, right off the bat, my You're gonna get the million dollar homes? Uh I don't know if it'll be million dollar homes, but it'll be it'll be nice homes, comfortable homes, very, very Where? Um, New York, Cali, wherever Florida. Wherever they ask me. You know, wherever they ask me, because I'm not wherever they ask me, that's where they're gonna get their, their homes. A one shot deal. One shot deal. They don't owe nothing. Then on top of that, I set them up with a, a, a IRA or. A, a How many sub, kids you got? I got four girls. Four girls. So let's say five hundred thousand each. So that's two million dollars right there, right? Two million. Okay. What else? You said I, IRAs. How much money? Is, now you're looking at the numbers, right? You're looking at the numbers. I, I don't like this exercise. <laughs> yo, I mean, I'm just wondering, yo, because it's. I, no, no, can we go? Can we go all the way through? You yeah, said IRAs, all right. You said IRAs. Okay, no, 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 check that IRAs. Yo, so we're just gonna settle with the house. I just settle with the house first. Well, what's next? You gotta get a plane. A ball, a ball. I got needs his own person. No, no, no. But now I, I, no, I can't. Start looking at the map, right? Jack you Blue is looking always good. You start <laughs> looking. It's funny because I did this exercise with somebody, not Lotto, right? So the guy is a, a friend of mine. He's like, "Yo, when I retire, I'm gonna have a million dollars." I said, "Man, that's nice. Million dollars is nothing, though." That's what I try to explain to this person. He's telling me about the cars he's looking at. This, oh that, and that. God. So I said, all right, let's do this exercise. I said, let's give you a budget. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, You're fucking up my dream, though. I might have to drink on that one. Yo, what, what was it? Chris, I think it was like, uh, I think it was like, uh, I gave him a, a spending allowance. I said, pick a number. How much you think you could live off a day? I think he said something crazy like uh, like three hundred dollars a day, or, no no three or five hundred dollars something like that. A day? A, is that a day? That's Chris, a, that's a lot of money. You're a millionaire now, Chris. Remember, you you're not. So you got, so I got a million dollars liquid on my on my on, on, on liquid, right? Actually, you know what, Chris? Give me one second, and I'll tell you exactly the exercise I did. Uh. uh so I, I, I went to Google and I said, how long would a million dollars last? But that has to do also with where you, where you live, bro. No, but it, it's a hypothetical. Okay. So, right, and I did that. I said, where you decide to retire might have a big impact. Of course. Uh, on average, uh, gold banking rates estimate that a million dollars in savings will last about 19 years. But the way he was spending it was crazy. So. I just did some, some simple calculations. I want to say, Chris, honestly, I think I made it give him like, was it $1,000 a week, which would make it 52000 No, it was more than that. But it, it was a small exercise, and within five years, the guy was broke. Money was gone. And, I, and what I tried to tell him, I said, listen, you got to think, you get that large sum of money, you're, it shouldn't be like, what am I going to buy? It's how am I going to double this? How am I going to triple this? Gonna flip it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how am I going to make it sustainable? And it's, it's, it's funny because when you, when you talk to most 
people they just want to spend and it's like no you got to reinvest that and you got to kind of hit the brakes and be like all right what, what's my long-term goal is to never work another day in my life exactly. to be financially secure. secure so what the fuck i'm going to do For, best thing you need to do is like if i won that's 7500 um, um 7.5 million i would disappear i would go take a nice two-month vacation and i will fly in uh the best financial guys in the world i'm like all right what options do you have how can we make this world like you know things of yeah. that nature so you could invest your money so you don't in, agree with my roth all right all right <laughs> i agree with it but the 200 two, the two million dollars you don't want to put the 500 for each kid Lou. how much you, you your daughter's told that you're worth 7.5 no no you nobody, think they, they're gonna nobody knows it's new york state lotto no. what are you gonna go up there with the luchador <laughs> <It'll> basketball be, <laughs> you, you ever see you ever see when when they want to cover that identity? <laughs> the, the black thing will be like that. Yo, but Chris, your smile is undeniable. <laughs> They're like, yo, we know that smile. What I'm saying <laughs> is, what I'm saying is, but, but you see, before we, I just want to make sure my girls were good, and my mother and my brother, and my sister are good, right? So this is only your girls. You know, we didn't even talk about your brother and your brother. No, no, but to, you don't you don't think they're gonna want to move to Culebra? <laughs> Yeah, that might be one point two. <laughs> Stuff is bad over there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight hundred thousand. You got me scratching my head. Yeah, yeah. Imaginary money. You're stress. You're stress. <laughs> but it, it goes quick. No, no, no. But quick. check, but check this out. See, but you know, you know my mentality. You know I'm always yeah. You know, so I'll, I'll I'll stick with the two minutes. So right now I'm five point five. Five point five. Let's knock out another million. And, and Chris, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I know before you buy them their house. While you, while you're driving them to go buy the house, you're gonna be in a helicopter. I know you're gonna be in a helicopter. That reads Soto. Breeders. <laughs> while you're landing, Daddy Yankee's gonna be singing. This is all just. Un- <laughs> this is just to unveil the home. <laughs> I give you one hard. You know, most lot. What is? It's a crate. It's a staggering number. More than fifty percent of lot of winners on pro yeah, within five but, years. But it's, but it's what you said. It's because it, it, they don't we, stop and think. We, you know. We, uh, I, I, um, um, since I'm on a roll, uh, I want to say financial literacy. I think that that's what's killing the minorities. That's what's killed us. And and uh, fortunately for you and your wife. You guys are smart enough that I know you're gonna you're gonna. I wasn't able to speak to my kids about financial liter- literacy, uh, about finances. You know, it's always oh, make sure you save your money for a rainy day. That's not enough. That's no. that's some cliche shit. No, my mother, she was like, I, you know, when you're young, I would go, I would go meet my mother at the factory. I pick her up, you know, because Fridays was peak of payday. Uh-huh. Back in the day, they used to pay her in these little brown envelopes. It was cash. And she used to work on the factory down on 43rd in the Utrecht. Okay. And what she would do is she worked the assembly line for the, what do you call that, the holsters for the police department. Okay. They manufacture that. So she would get it. She would take the whole, it was a funny, funny story. Uh, Mike, his mother worked in that factory too. Fat Mike? Yeah, his mother worked in that factory. So, the, you know, I guess it would get assembled up the line. It would get, uh, you know, it would get put together up the line. And then once it came down to my mother, she would take it and dip it in, um, black ink okay. you would dye it and then I guess they had a drying process okay. so every Friday it was ritual I would I would leave school 131 right across the street from her there was a, a bodega they had a video game I would wait for that and then we would go we would go to freak I think it was uh Charlie's Pizzeria on 44th and 8th Avenue was it Charlie's Pizzeria it was good pizza two slices extra cheese <laughs> but anyhow going back so she would have the little brown envelope with the money probably making 150 back then okay and she would go dig in and you know <sighs> pull out the five and i'm like mommy how much money you make <laughs> she's like don't be asking me no questions about money <laughs> but i thought this since i was a little kid but i as i got older i would ask her about money is why, why are you all in my business? Like, she goes, you're going to pay the rent? You're going to pay the rent? So it's funny how minorities are with money. They don't want to educate kids. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's real important for them to establish them with bank accounts, nope. show them how to save money, show them how to manage money. We have to break those chains. Yeah. I, I talk about mental slavery because I talk about the hamster wheel. I talk about people. I, I've gotten into conversation with people. Oh, you know, you don't like nine to five. No, I'm not saying nothing about nine to five. We all have to put in 
some type of, we have to put in some work to get, but there has to be goals set. I don't want to work a nine to five till I'm 70. The working man's a sucker, right, Chris? Exactly. Sonny said it best. <laughs> <laughs> Think Mickey Mouse is crying over you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so oh, um, what I'm saying is that um, it's, we all have to put in that work, but there has to be a goal. And to be completely honest with you, I think, excuse me, for us minorities, I think the goal should be be free at 55. 55 years old, plan your life so you can be free at 50 to 55 years old. You're still young. You still you still get to enjoy life. You know, um, when my father passed, I got so upset and so angry. My father worked all his life, Lou, all his life. Society's rules, he did everything right. He took care of me, he took care of... He, he helped people and he retires two years later he passes away you know what that makes me I'm like no it can't life can't be this way this ha there has to be a better way so what you do is you work that nine to five because you have to but there has to be a plan where at some point the money has to work for you not you for your money that's the key thing and and th that's a valid point and the problem is that with society I guess as minorities, sometimes you, you, you're you made to feel that you're not as good if you don't have certain things, yes. materialistic yes. things. So I think once you cleanse your, your thought process of, I'm good, okay. I, don't, I don't need nothing to define me, I'm good. I'm gonna take that money and I'm gonna leverage it for something bigger. Or understanding the power of your dollar. And that, that's more of a collective conversation because I think as minorities, if we realize the value on our purchase dollars, we could leverage things that we're in control, we're in power. Right now, you're, 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 just, you're just a number. I, so yeah, you go to the store, you're just a number. I promise you, Lou, and this could be a little exercise if you want. I promise you, if you write down, we're not calling nobody out. All the people that you and I know, we know, we know most of the same people, they have Cuban link chains and they have bracelets and Rolexes. I bet you 99% of them don't own the property, don't own real estate, don't own the house. Yeah. That's the problem because you just said it. We'd rather look good to show off to people that, oh, a chain's gonna define that you made it? Mm -hmm. No. That chain, that, um, uh, a few years back, I went to check how much the, the it's about, Cubans. It's it, six, seven it, thousand. It, go, it goes from eight to ten thousand, yeah, yeah. depending on the length and the, and the width exactly. of the thing. And I'm like, that's that's close to a down payment to a house. That that's that's when I when I look at these young guys, I'm like, listen, I know I know I know kids that go to clubs, Chris, without nothing, drop three thousand. They hustle. Yeah, of course. And listen, I'm not knocking nobody's hustle. No, no, no. But, but that, my thing is just be smart about it. Just understand that's not a long term you're hustling, thing. You're hustling backwards. Yeah. If you make if you're dropping three thousand on Friday, right? Saturday you're you're regretting it, so you're going to probably like a social lounge or whatever. Let's say the, the whole weekend you drop maybe four thousand, right? Imagine if you took that and you re you took let's say I'm not gonna go out for a month, right? That's four weeks, that's sixteen thousand. Guess what? That's a down payment for a bread route. Bread route makes good money. You could probably pull in close to ninety thousand a year on the bread route. You don't even have to drive a fucking truck. You get a guy to drive your truck. You sit back. You're making money there. Now you chill. You resume doing what you're doing, yeah. hanging out. The next, the, the the third month, you say, you know what? I'm gonna stay back. I'm not gonna go out this month. Another sixteen thousand. Instead of that bread route, now I'm gonna go buy me a uh, ice cream route, or I'm gonna buy me a paper route. Yes. Ten thousand over there. Now you have money coming in from different places. And now you're developing a plan. Now your money's working for exactly. you. Exactly. So it's uh, it, it's unfortunate, but a lot of these guys, they live in the moment. And like you said, I'd rather walk around with a $10,000 chain and really think about it. Anybody could get had. I don't care how how bad you are. Anybody could get had. You come around the corner, somebody jacks you with a gun, there goes that $10,000 down the drain where exactly. it could have been making money for exactly but, uh, listen look, i don't like, want to sound like an old man no, but no, no, yeah. don't get me wrong yeah i don't know if if if, if you if you've been through it but i've been through it i i had my chains i had my bracelets i had my pinky rings and there's nothing wrong with it but just be smart about be it. smart about it I, i'm not gonna drop i'm not gonna spend ten fifteen thousand dollars on jewelry when i'm still living in an apartment 
That makes no motherfucking sense. And it's not to say that you can't live in an apartment and still have jewelry. You could, but if you're making, if you're make, but if you're making money like that, uh, what do you call it, disposable income like that, yeah. you should really think because that wave is not going to last that long, and it never does. I've seen so many dope boys and so many hustlers in my life that they're riding nice and high, and they think it's going to stay like that. It's it's just it's a it's a wave. Somebody else is the man, and it comes, you know. Cat Williams had the best one of the best lines I've heard. He has a few, but one of the best lines I've heard in one of his stand ups, he goes. If you were slinging weed in uh, uh, ten years ago, and you still slinging weed now, uh, ten years after, we can't be friends. We can't be friends because you know. You know, but maybe he's do, some, maybe. do some crack cocaine or no, move he, up in life. But maybe he's moving more weight. But that's what he was talking about. Yeah, but if you still doing, you still in the same still level. The same we way. can't be friends. I'm not, not, listen, the hustle, the hustle, you know me, I'm always you're looking for the angles and we and we make the dollar, but what I'm saying is that, come on, man, I, I, we know people that are still selling fucking weed, and I'm like, really? And then, Chris, don't get me wrong, listen, so it goes back to what you said earlier. You gotta level up. No, 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 but it goes back to what you said. Sometimes you don't, uh, how do I put this? Sometimes you may not be, uh, the drive might not be there to grow because you're content laying low. And I know hustlers like that. Respect goes to those guys too, that they've been hustling. I know I know one particular guy that's been hustling uh, 21 years now. Never did a day in jail, right? He pays his bills and he always tells me, he goes, Lou, I don't want a nine to five. I respect that no, because I respect that. he knows where he's at. But his thing is, the thing is that he's not out there dropping three, $4,000 on yeah. stupidness. My thing is, if you if you if you splurge your money like that, then you really got to think about your game yeah, plan yeah. long term yeah, because it's not gonna last. And you're being reckless yeah. too if you think people are not watching and they're not talking. You, but, you just reminded me of what's that? My boy Kanish. Kanish told uh, 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 Mikey. Kanish <laughs> told Mikey, "Listen, you <laughs> punk. <laughs> I've never worked a day if, in my life. You think I don't have the stones?" To drop, I got alimony. I got child support. I got mortgages. Mortgages. That's a baller right there. And you say I don't have the stones to put in my money? I do this for real. I do this. That's, that's, that's real talk, though. though. That's Somebody tells that that's real talk. And he had to shut. He had to shut. Uh, uh, he had to shut. You know, he shut Mikey up. By the way, it's just a reference of Rounders. If you haven't caught the movie Rounders, you're an idiot. Go watch it. Great poker movie. Yeah. It's basically based on my life. Any anybody anybody that wants to get into poker, watch Rounders. It it will intrigue you. And the characters that you see is what you really find. Yeah. <laughs> I believe Kanish was uh Was that based on uh, based on me? Woo! I gotta give you the truck, Lou, but I ain't giving you no more money. <laughs> you know, you know what I was gonna say? So stay stay in there, right? Talking about hustlers and stuff like that. Do you see the Irishman? Lou, Scorsese, he's, he's, he's the best. De Niro, Pesci, Al Pacino. Yo, even Ray Romano killed it. He bodied it. Ray, they did, Ray did a great job. Yeah. Ray did a great job. Awesome movie. The comedian was in it too, Sal. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, is it Sal? Sal, Sal uh, is it Sal Monacosco? Or Ma I'm going to say his name wrong. Uh, I know what you're talking about. He has a few. He has a few. He's a funny guy. He has, I saw him. I, I saw. I saw one of his stand-ups. He is kind of funny? funny. I think he's he's, 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 he's kind of funny. He's hysterical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love the Irishman. Love oh. anything that has to do with uh, biopic uh, type mobs. I I love. But when you put the this 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 cast together. Along with Scorsese, man. That's magic, right there. That's on. mobster magic. Yo, listen. <laughs> so over over the holidays, three cracks to watch that movie. I kept on falling asleep, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Oh, no, and know. then I looked; it's three and a fucking half hours. It's long. It's long. It's a Chris, long I was movie. home all day. It's long. Look, it's long. And it should have been a fucking miniseries. It's slow pace. It is slow pace, but when the action cooks, it cooks. But see, the thing is, with a movie like that, I'm. Just the dialogue and and the way they're I love thinking. It. I love that. I I love mobster dialogue. Oh my god! Like uh, when, when Al Pacino, um, 
we, we, he plays Jim. Uh, spoiler alert: If you haven't seen it, it's about the Jimmy Hoffa story. And it's his, about uh, the, 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 and his most, trainer, It's about Hoffa, Jimmy Hoffa, yeah, and the Teamsters leader, founder, founder. So when Hoffa, uh, he's feeling himself, and he's like, oh, "I'm not stepping down." He's telling Pesci, yeah. Pesci was the leader. I'm not stepping yeah. down. <laughs> Pesci looked at him and goes, "I, I understand." <laughs> You know that, that that classic monster thing when they touch you? It's over. You're I dead. Tried. He I goes, tried. I tried. Hey, 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 hey,
like the Jim Jones, uh, the, the Kool Aid dude, he, whatever he said, they would do. Yeah. So you know, so uh, that's right. Yeah, he was feeling himself. He said, "Fuck this." He said, I'm, not, I'm, not, "I'm not. Yeah, I, I built this. I built this. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, the, great. The, the, Pacino did a really good job. Great job. Pacino did a great job, and and De Niro, one of my favorite actors, if not in the top three in my in my in my. Uh, so you uh, have De Niro over Pacino. Um, all time work. I personally, I like De Niro better. I think De Niro from Bob movies is uh, phenomenal, but I think uh, full range though it might be Pacino. Pacino, yeah, I, I think I you know what it is because I, I I've seen De Niro in in, in very similar roles. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Pacino. You know, uh, Scent of the Woman. He was great. I don't know if you saw that movie. Yeah, Scent of the Woman. Um, Frankie and Johnny. I didn't see Frankie and Johnny. Carlito's way. Carlito's way. Yeah, no, so like I, he had me convinced in Scarface that he was Latin. I thought he was Spanish too. Yeah, Latin, so. I mean, so the guy, he's he's really good. I mean, De Niro, De Niro kind of stays within within his character. Yeah. He doesn't like Al. I can see it's either Irish or Italian. That's the you yeah. know. Like, no, but like I said, I, I you know uh, the thing about me about uh, uh, for for me to. If a, if a character moves me, mm -hmm. if a if a not a character, yeah, if a character moves me, the actor, I, I'll put him in a high place. And I got Denzel up there too. And Denzel, Denzel if you look at it, Denzel, Denzel is is, is you know, it, it, he's not. And like I said, Denzel is in my top three also. But he's sort of what you're you're talking against. Denzel is not very versatile. You don't think so? He he could play he just he could play a sweet uh think about it. The only thing that he came out of character he won he won an Oscar with. Tra training training day. Now, I think training day was you there was no denying it. You had to give it to him for training day. But Philadelphia, yeah, I think he got nominated. Yeah, but he, 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 he's not, a very passive, you know, the equalizer thing. The equalizer, equalizer, yeah, with, with, he's a hitman. Uh, safe house was uh decent. Safe House was good, yeah. Um I just I I put him in the same, like I said, top three. Uh, like De Niro also, like he, like, like he knows, you know, and and with and with uh, with Training Day, he was he he really came out of character, and it was it was it was awesome. I, I, oh, Training Day is great. I love. I'm it. surprised they didn't they never followed that up. Well, he got shot 115 times. So how no, are they no. gonna follow it up? Chris, how do they do it now? They do it. They give me a prequel. In the street, like they made De Niro look young. Oh, tell me that wasn't crazy. And the thing is, I knew he was gonna look young because. I, I put on YouTube, I saw Jimmy Fallon interviewing De Niro, and they said, how do they do that? And he started explaining it. But amazing Yo, work. amazing technology. Amazing work. <laughs> you, you know, it's hysterical, that, right. that scene when the butcher, uh, I think Rough House is his daughter, so De Niro goes to give him a beatdown. You see when De Niro's stomping a guy out, he has to, he has to like, <laughs> take his time. <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, <laughs> this is, it's not bad. <laughs> That it was, it was, it was a, a little like I said. The movie was great, but that right there, like, like, that that got me thinking. You know, the the was up in age, man. Yeah, no, he's in the seventies, man. He's in the seventies. I saw. Yeah, she's up there too. Man. Yeah, she's up there too. I, mean, I saw um, a quick clip of uh, uh, um, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is, is ninety Nine years old. Yeah, he's in his 90s. I saw him in Ellen. Ellen, and he still goes. <laughs> No, he, he just he, he, he just he, he, he just directed this movie that's coming out. Remember the Atlanta, the bombing in Atlanta. Oh yeah, that was someone directed that. That was, that was pretty good. That's I want to see it. And I didn't know the guy was slow though. You saw that? Who was slow? The security guard. That oh, they they they, they convinced him to take the rap. Yeah. And then after that, the lawyer's like, "What are you doing?" Like, I guess they 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 tricked him. The police department. Yeah, Because yeah. they needed somebody to put. I put think it, it was on. more of the like it could have been FBI or type of shit. Yeah, yeah. It was secret they, service. They told him in the little. In the, I haven't watched the movie, but in the little uh, previews that I've seen, um, they saying um, they saying uh, say it again. There's a bomb, and they yeah, they're, they're yeah, making yeah. them repeat it. So the funny thing is. I totally forgot about that incident, and uh, he, Clint was said that the, the dude, the dude, the security guard, the, he's a national hero. Like he, really? that's what you know. He and his story needs to be told. It's crazy stuff. No, no, but he was he was picked up as a hero. The person that discovered the bomb, 
and then later afterwards they couldn't find who set the bomb so then they kind of flipped it on him mm-hmm. and that's when they convinced him like hey say you set the bomb and then they, they were messing with him and then after that he's trying to fight for his uh his, for yeah, his yeah. justice but crazy stuff crazy stuff oh i didn't know clean he's wow freaking no, guy so, and his wife is amazing latina get the fuck out of here she meanwhile had, i thought he was a racist fuck no, because of like Gran Torino. Yeah. Ever since Gran Torino, I'm like, this motherfucker's oh, racist. Man. Wasn't that a great movie? It was good. It was good. You know. <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> going to be out. I know you like that shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do you see that book? Uh, the movie I told you was the great book? Lou, I swear to you. You got to see it. Gonna, I know we're old. and I, I know we're old on this movie. Because it came out, what, last year? Won an Academy Award. But I stumbled across it. And the lead character is, oh, I forget his name. But he's in a lot of movies. But the open, he's from the Bronx and he's a hustler. You know the, mother, <laughs> the, the motherfucker. He lost his job, so uh, the, the comedian Sal uh, Maniscalco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tells him, he goes, I, I know you can make some quick money. You got fifty dollars. Let's go. Let's go to the <laughs> diner. They start doing a hot dog eating contest, and the guy beats uh, he beats the guy. But anyway, long story. They call he called um, he's on a job interview with the black guy, and he goes, you know, what's your name? Is that? It's, and then the guy goes, uh, they call me Frankie the Lip. <laughs> he goes, why do they call you Frankie the Lip? He goes, because I can talk myself out of anything. I said, that's Chris. <laughs> that's Chris. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Sebastian, because I, I keep... There I, you go. Sebastian, Sebastian Manis. Manis. I don't know what the fuck his name. Let me see his name, man. He's fucking with all these vowels, these fucking Italians. Sebastian Maniscalco. Maniscalco? Yeah, there you go. Funny dude, though. Very funny dude. Maniscalco. 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 No, he's funny, though. He is, he is. And he, he is, kills he that role, too, in that movie. Yeah? Yeah, he's good. His um, stand-up is very funny, because it's about family shit. He's yeah, like, he's talking about he talks about his, uh, his his relationship with his uh, with his wife, because um, she's Jewish. And he goes like, mm, you know, he goes, I'm Italian. We eat, we fucking eat. <laughs> he goes, we taking bread, we dipping. <laughs> He goes, when he married his wife, well, he got with her, he went to the house, they're like, oh, we're going to have supper. He goes, supper? He goes, there's no fucking food. He goes, you call this fucking food? He goes, you call this food? <laughs> <laughs> He's a trip, man. Oh, uh, uh, staying along those, oh, staying along those lines. You, you, you see, it's funny, and I'm, 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 I'm not too happy that I'm saying this, but I'm going to say, you, you told me, you, you're criticizing us of being, of, of being late and being old about a movie last year. You know what I saw this this past uh, this past weekend? I saw the movie Interstellar. I don't even know what that is. That's oh, that's the Outer Space movie, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, 2000. Okay. Brad Pitt? It's not Brad, no, that's Ad Astra. I haven't seen that one. Oh, okay. The one I'm talking about is Matthew McConaughey. McCartney? Oh, yeah, yeah, Matthew McConaughey. I like him. He's a good actor. Very good actor. This is about uh, uh, quantum physics. And, wow. no, no, look, I saw the movie. Another long movie, uh-huh. not a lot of action, uh-huh. but it talks about time. Uh, it talks about uh, 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 the, uh, the, the physics about uh, you know when you with the deja vu thing. Mm-hmm. They're basically saying that a parallel universe and beautiful movie. Like I said, it might not be for everybody because everybody's not intellectually up there like I am. But I will tell you this: you gotta see it on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning because it's, it's, it, you, if you fell asleep with the Irishman it's, with this one, it's a real it, snoozer. It, it, <laughs> if it took you three, if it took you three tries for the Irishman, it's gonna take you about seven to do this and, one. Mind you, Chris, the, the three tries, I picked up where I thought I fell asleep. I, and it wasn't like I started from the beginning <laughs> and it knocked me out every time. And then I'm listening to people. Oh, it's the fucking greatest movie I've ever. I said, what the fuck? I said, I gotta go back and see it. it Irishman, no quick question though. Yes. How, um, Hoffa? Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy yes. Hoffa. His son was actually there. His his foster kid, apparently. And, and, um, but they're saying that really happened, though, right? I I don't know. Because at the end of the credits, they said that he it was a uh, he was cleared of knowing anything. Or he something? did some he did some time for some bullshit, but it wasn't because of that. Oh no! So I was getting that he didn't set up his dad. No, I don't think he, I don't think he knowingly set him up. I don't think he knowingly set him up. Yeah, he set him up, but I don't think it was knowingly he set him up. So yeah. you know. 
No, that, that it was a good movie from what I remember. I gotta go back and see it again though. No, but it was it, it, it's it's uh it was good. It was good. It was good. But Interstellar uh, uh, is basically the Earth is going to shit, so they gotta find another planet, a livable planet, and what these people are talking about now. Everybody's talking about going to Mars. I mean, uh, is it Mars or? I forgot whether, uh, I forget which Well, they've been saying Mars for a minute now. Well, no, that's what this whole uh, Elon Musk thing he's talking about. He, he wants to, you know, Elon, make, yeah, yeah, yeah. make, uh, make uh, what, trips to outer space to another planet, a livable planet. But that's the talk that's been happening for know, years. Yeah. And you got all these people with all our money and say, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll invest to go. Shit. Would you do that? No, that's not I, don't know if I, I don't know if I'll do it, but yo, Lou, in the, uh, uh, real quick, this is crazy. And, uh, and we'll go back to Elon Musk because I have something I want to tell you about. Um, in the movie Interstellar, they explaining, listen, we stop in this planet for every for every hour, it's about eight years in Earth, on Earth. Really? So they go into a planet where it's crazy. It was crazy. It's accelerated then. It, if it's for an hour to translate to so eight it, years. But the shit was a little mishap happened. The hour turned into an uh, hour and 45 minutes. When they came back, mm -hmm. Lou, 23 years have passed by. So he's all old when he gets No, back. no, he's he's young. It, he, the person oh, that he left in the ship. Got you. They're all old. He's old. And the people on Earth. Already 20, 30, 23 years old. Like his kids that he left when they were the, when they were eleven or twelve years old, they're already grown and shit. Crazy. Like I said, it's a smooth. It's it's it, it's a slow movie. It's a slow movie. It's a slow. Movie. I don't want to call you, it slow. It's a slow so you got to be into that like sci-fi to really enjoy that type of stuff. I'm into the time. You know, like I we, we spoke about it in the last podcast. I'm obsessed with time, so I I looked. I I I was. I got into it. I got into it because the time it, it was, it, it was. It, it, you laugh, you fuck up. It's the truth. So with the, the seven point five billion you got, you could buy a, tra a time traveling machine. No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> you, you ever seen that that, that meme on on, on 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 social media where they give you uh, the red pill? They give you fifty million dollars right now. The blue pill. You go back when you're twelve years old, but you have all the knowledge that you have now. What would you pick? That's a good question. I would definitely go back. That's what I said. I would go back. I've asked people and they said- Because I, I feel like I'm, I can make that money. I can I make, make quadruple. 700 million. Oh. Google, that'll be me. <laughs> Fuck Ivan and whatever other motherfucker. Hey. And Sergoff. Yo, it's like the Back to the Future when the motherfucker had the books. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the Spider the, Betty. Yeah. World Series. <laughs> Those underdogs. Oh my God. When Ali be listening. I'm better than the that. horse races. Horse races, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah man. I'll, I'll bet everything. I'll bet my life. I'll steal and I'll bet. But so yeah, so going on on on. on I, I guarantee I'll make the more than fifty. I'll million. definitely make more than fifty, really? and, and I'll enjoy the process. What? Do you know that you, Lou? Imagine everything that you know now. You know, I'll create a fucking. I'll lead my army. <laughs> you want to have a cult? <laughs> Fuck Jim Jones, motherfucker! We <laughs> trust me. Tr you, won't, you trust me. I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking the dot com era. Oh, oh my we god! We would be on all that. On the like, iPhone. It'll be me and Steve Jobs. Like I'll literally look that motherfucker up. I, th I think I got an idea for you. <laughs> and meanwhile, he's he's been having it. I've been dream storming. <laughs> no, listen, the fucking uh, what was it Microsoft? Remember, like, uh, I don't know if you recall, I remember years ago hearing this story that the Microsoft um, maintenance crew, they were given stocks back then, like when Microsoft was early, and they all made off well. The janitors and everything. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. all made off well. Oh, so imagine, my, and I can remember freaking, uh, what was that, uh, Yahoo. I remember Yahoo early. My boy's like, yo, this shit's going to pop. I used to chat in Yahoo. You used to chat in Yahoo? I used to chat. You know how people are in the chat rooms? Yeah, you yeah, know me. I was Yahoo, and I used to be six foot three NYPD detective. Yo, so you lived a lot of lies. I, I little, little, my, my, my life until three years ago was a lie. Until three years ago? Yeah, when I met this girl and I was stalking, she, I, had to, I had to come clean with everything. 
Uh, with that being said, thank you for joining us uh, to another episode of Breeze Shooters. We appreciate the love we've been getting. Um, uh, Milton, if, if you were awake, man, you had an opportunity. You blew it, brother. Haters gonna hate, little nigga. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to do a recording with you. But uh, again, thanks for the love. And uh, Chris, take us out. I'm keeping it simple now, Lou. The best time for new beginnings is now. Stay up. Peace. Boom. Peace shooters. <laughs>